Assalamu alaikum everyone. This is Amar bin Saleem. I represent the marketing team at the Office of Advancement at LUMS. A very warm welcome to all of you to the third day of our second leg uh, for the Knowledge Week that we are doing, uh, Knowledge Week webcast series that we are doing for Suleiman Daud School of Business. You would have seen us speaking to you about the accounting and analytics program offered at SDSB. Then we uh, connected with you for the business and public policy program. Uh, we also talked to you about the healthcare management and innovation program, then technology management and entrepreneurship, MS degree, then MS in supply chain and retail management. And all these five programs were covered. We talked about these programs during the last week. Um, this week, we have already connected with you uh, for our discussions regarding Master of Business Administration program. And yesterday, we talked to you about the MS Financial Management program offered at SDSB. Today, uh, we have once again come live to discuss the PhD, uh, PhD Management degree offered at uh, SDSB, Salaman Dao School of Business. And tomorrow, inshallah, we'll be you know wrapping our Knowledge Week webcast series for Salaman Dao School of Business, our webcast for the Executive MBA program. Uh, as you all know that we offer all these programs through SDSB, which is short for Suleiman Dal School of Business. And SDSB is the first and the only business school in the country to have scored the elevated AACSB accreditation. And that is a certification that is an accolade and achievement that you know clubs us with the top 5% of the world's most remarkable, astounding business schools. And uh, again, I could remind you that these webcast series are being done uh, are being done for you. These webcasts are for you. So it it's, it does give us an opportunity to communicate to you what the program is, uh, what the admission criteria is, what are some of the important dates that you must remember, who might be an ideal candidate for the program, what your career could look like once you graduate with the uh, with our degree program, and uh, and and basically the idea is to answer your questions. So again, if you are confused about how this program is going to benefit you, what are the important dates, uh, what how do you fill in the application, and uh, any other question that you might be you know stuck with, this is your opportunity to converse with the faculty members, with the alumna, with the alumnus, and with our current student as well. So again, I'm greatly honored to be in the presence of Dr. Ghazal Zulfikar, Dr. Azim Shah, and Ms. Anika Sufi. Uh, Dr. Ghazal Zulfikar is a very eminent member of the SDSB faculty, and she's also the director for the PhD management program. Uh, Dr. Azim Shah is a LUMS PhD management graduate, and he is presently working as senior regional researcher at the Institute uh, at the International Water Management Institute. Ms. Anika Sufi is a current doctoral candidate, and she is enrolled in the PhD management program. Thank you so much, Dr. Ghazal, uh, Dr. Azim, and Anika for, for joining us today. Uh, Dr. Ghazal, uh, you know the drill. Up say he start karunga. Agar ab kindly introduce karwaye a PhD management program. Our audience ko or also a uh, thora sa program structure ke baare mein guide ki the ki kaise bhi humne puri degree ko jo hai plan kiya for the four years. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Amar. Um, it's uh, a great pleasure to be representing uh, this program that is a real labor of love, I would say, of the SDSB faculty. Um, this program is also very aligned with the vision and mission of LUMS and of the business school uh, in terms of making an impact on business and society. So this program is one of uh, you know, the vehicles of social impact for us, we are producing PhD scholars that uh, are, you know, we expect and we've seen already the impact that they're making all over the country, um, regionally as well, as well as internationally. So our uh, graduates have made a mark everywhere. And um, uh, so the program itself, coming to the program, it's a very small select program. Uh, it is very hard to get into and we usually have very small cohorts. Um, you know, we hope to take about 10 people every year, but often uh, we take in a, a lot less because we cannot compromise on quality. So, um, you know, we only fill those seats. Dr. Ghazal, that, a lot less than 10 people? A uh, lot less than 10 people. Well, you know, sometimes we've actually had 12 people, but I would say last year we gave offers to six and uh, right now there are four. Um, so yeah, uh, you know, the, the program can be exclusive and it changes uh, from year to year. We are looking for the best 
and only the best um, do uh, start with us. So, um, you know, that, that's how it is. But then again, as uh, you know, as one of my, uh, my colleagues said, and I also uh, believe in that, a PhD is not for everyone. A PhD, and I'm not saying that from a place of privilege. Um, I'm saying that because a PhD can be a real burden, as those of us that have been through the process can tell you. Uh, along the way, you uh, ask yourself sometimes, several times a day, "Kya maine apne upar ye musibat kyun dali?" So um, you know, uh, uh, yeah. So again, I, I would say you have to think very carefully before you decide to embark this journey. And if at any point you feel this is not for you, uh, it was probably because you didn't think this through. Um, uh, there is so much else and life can really be thoroughly enjoyed without a PhD. So, uh, I mean, that's... Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah this, this came for you. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, having said that, it's also a very satisfying uh, experience, as, you know, uh, Azim and Anika will be able to tell you. Uh, the program itself is, uh, we designed it for a four-year uh, degree, as a four-year degree, but we understand that because it's such an intensive research process, it's not uh, usually, you know, it's not often possible at the same time, the, for instance, those that are funded, fully funded, they are fun fully funded for four years. Um, okay. After that, yeah, they have to work and they have to, you know, support themselves, um, at, as, you know, Anika and Azim will be able to tell you. The, um, the, the coursework is a year and a half, and it's very intense, I think, uh, more than me, Anika and Azim will be able to talk about that. We have two comprehensive exams. Um, the for second one uh, actually is, uh, brings you very close to your proposal. So the thesis proposal is a big milestone, which uh, ideally students would do um, in their third year but it um, but that's the ideal and then the last part is you know you you get a supervisor you uh, we have some excellent supervisors in the faculty because they are world-class researchers amongst us in many different fields there are three tracks uh, organizational behavior and strategy track there's the operations track and the finance track um, so have I answered your question or you have Dr. Ghazal, I was talking about your talk about disclaimer, I remember that you said that you said last year that uh, the PhD management program at LAMS is not a way to get you out of your midlife crisis. So only join us if you are very, very serious about, about pursuing it and completing it. Or um, a uh, relevant question we have got on social media, so that is from Noor, and she says, when you say, that the program changes from year to year, does that mean that the curriculum change uh, changes or the program is difficult and the people leave midway? No, 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 no. So I didn't say that. I said the number of applicants that we give offers to changes from year to year. So even though I mean budgeted seats milti hai, but not always do we fill all of the all of them, right? So it's not ke, um, sure. you know, as some other places might do ke hame ye budgeted seats fill karne. We will only give offers if the panel of faculty involved in the admission process is really happy with the applicant uh, through when we, you know, they've gone through the whole process. Okay, Dr. Ghazal, thank you. Um, uh, Dr. Azim, gonna come to you, uh, first requesting that you kindly, you know, uh, talk to our audience about your own academic and professional background. Uh, and then also how is this LUMS PhD management program different as compared to similar programs being offered at other universities in Pakistan. Thank you, Amar. Uh, so my background is I'm an engineer by my qualification. I did my master's also in engineering, but that was more towards engineering management. And I work in the corporate sector before joining LUMS for around uh, three and a half, four years uh, with some of the top multinationals. Then during that time, I really felt like that, you know, uh, this mechanized uh, kind of routine is something I'm not very comfortable in. So I decided to opt a field where I have the liberty to carry out my own research. Uh, so that landed me towards this PhD program at LUMS. And, um, uh, you know, I'm also one of those uh, candidates who graduated from LUMS and decided not to join the academic sector uh, because during my PhD, I started working for an international research organization, International Water Management Institute. 
and it's so fulfilling that uh, you know while remaining in the non academic sector you are still publishing you have been contributing to the research proposals uh, so something i really enjoy so i work in a sector which is non academic but uh, it's very close uh, dr azim if i may interrupt uh, when you were pursuing the phd program at lums were you sure that you were going to go for uh, join the academia or did you already have that in mind that no i'm go- i'm not going to join the academia i'm going to go work for the industry So it's very interesting. I mean, my friends uh, at the PhD program always used to say, "This is a corporate guy." So his work in the corporate sector, we don't see him going back to uh, the academic world or going to the academic world after the PhD program. Somehow, I got that opportunity during my PhD, and uh, I applied and I got selected. And then I realized that you know there is a world beyond academics as well for the PhD uh, students. and uh, it's not that you know there are less opportunities there are more fulfilling opportunities in this world you know, there are think tanks there are research organizations development partners like banks and uh, other international financial institutions and you have um, the liberty to choose and the best way to go into that sector is uh, what i believe after your phd you you basically you know connect to a, a similar institution in the in the capacity of a postdoc and that really you know helps you to get acquainted with what uh, this this whole world of uh, non academic uh, phd sector is and uh, then you polish your skills and then you basically pursue that career so i mean that is that is an area where i i would strongly suggest the phd candidates should also um, uh, aspire to to join after they complete their phd and uh, coming back to your original question you know background so i did phd i have been continuing in the sector and i am uh, i'm quite happy and uh, you know that is something that i would really advise for the people who are coming from non academic backgrounds into phd that there are these ample opportunities available both inside the country and outside the country are numerous opportunities so so i mean you know district because yeah bilkul say dr azim thank you so much for uh, for your answer and we are also very happy uh, uh, to know that you're you're working in an in industry because so many times we do get asked this question ke after after um, uh, one completing their program from um, the phd program is academia the only option that they are left with and now hum bata sakte hain ki nahi ji hamare paas aur bhi kafi sare graduates hain and i remember i was doing this webcast with one of our graduates from ssc this is a school of science and engineering and then after completing his bachelor's he went to um, the usa and did his phd from there and now is working at intel so again wahi wali baat hai ki sapne jo hai ki dima join hi karna hota hai kafi sare log jo hain after their phd programs are working in the industry or in the corporates as well bilkul theek dr azim ek maine question aapse aur bhi kiya tha ke jo hamare similar programs offer kiye jaate hain matlab different phd programs offer kiye jaate hain different other universities mein how in your opinion uh, is is lums phd program different from from those programs so uh, lums is uh, and dr gazal main aap se bhi iski take lunga aap aap ki bhi take lunga is pe thodi si yes so in my opinion you know uh, lums is offering the most rigorous program of all the phd programs that are offered in pakistan at the moment uh, i remember the dean who uh, we joined when we joined our phd program he used to say that we picked the best let's say five from the best five institutions so the top candidates from the top institutions of pakistan uh, or abroad for that matter uh, so uh, once you have that kind of lot uh, they really focus on developing the core research skills uh, which are very important i often see uh, some phd programs being offered without uh, that kind of rigorous course work and uh, that is the time when you really polish your skills of research and that shows up in your uh, later dissertation and and all that sort of thing uh, so lums is uh, you know where you have to undergo this rigor and that comes out in terms of uh, uh, the quality of your work uh, that you pursue and uh, typically you know this is something that helps you later in your career when I, mean, i realize now that i work with a lot of international uh phd uh, scholars from across the world uh we never come to you know kind of this reality that this is something that we are not taught at lums so when you compare yourselves with the top phd's uh, across the world uh mm-hmm. you you are very you know self satisfying in a sense that uh, uh, you you got that training in in lums and that training is very important 
department. So uh, to me, if you are you know, planning a degree in Pakistan in the field of management, I don't see any better option than LUMS. I, I'll have to agree. So, 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 so you said it's, it's about rigor, it's also about the quality of work and also the training. We could say, Dr. Ghazal, what do you take as this uh, question? Ke upar? Obviously, I completely agree with uh, Azim. Um, you know, I'm just coming out of, uh, literally, I just jumped off of my uh, research methods class in the, that I teach to first year PhD students. And it's a three hour class. I had thought I'd be really exhausted for this webcast, but the class is so energizing. And that it's really what I'm trying to make a point that the two things that are really exciting about the program are the faculty and the students. So the faculty, of course, you know, is uh, we've got some of the best uh, in the world. I don't, at LUMS, we don't talk about, we don't limit ourselves to national borders. Um, and so they have designed this program and itna inone usko exciting. Yeah, this is what the students tell me that, you know, are the way are sometimes it's just mind blowing the way we, the, the kind of ideas we're exposed to, the theory, the methods. But the students really are, uh, I think, what give this program its life. Um, the students are, you know, the, the, the things they've done um, during, but also post, for instance, Azim's, uh, um, you know, he's, a, he's not a Pakistan specific senior researcher, he's a regional researcher, he's responsible for scholars from, I mean, and researchers from different countries in his region. We also have um, Shweb, who is a professor at Newcastle in the UK. We have, you know, I mean, so what I'm saying is that we have people who are, um, we, have, we have graduates in IBA and uh, in different parts of the, the country and, and abroad. Our students have gone for postdocs, um, in Germany, and uh, one of them is about to leave for the UK. Um, so, you know, and, and these opportunities are coming when they come in contact because of, uh, you know, we do have a global network of scholars and uh, professors that our students engage with. And then these opportunities come organically to them because everyone can recognize a good quality uh, academic, a good quality PhD, a good quality researcher, a good quality teacher. You know, so another important thing that we, at LUMS, uh, we have always emphasized good, uh, you know, excellence in teaching, just as we do with excellence in research. And so our PhDs have the option of learning how to teach uh, alongside, you know, and I think Anika can talk about that from her experience, um, alongside uh, experienced faculty um, who really, uh, you know, who are interested in developing good teachers amongst our PhDs. And then the, the, the Learning Institute we have also provides ample opportunities for taking uh, training mm -hmm. in cutting edge pedagogical, um, you know, uh, interventions and initiatives that, they are, that are there. Um, so that's one thing. Uh, this year, we are doing something new and exciting and that we are opening up the program for the first time ever to working mm -hmm. professionals. Before that, we used to say you have to take a break from work and uh, join us. Um, now we're no longer saying that. So uh, the program modalities are a little different and we can you know, um, talk about that at some other time, but that's a new and exciting opportunity. Exactly. Because or this question, I mean, Dr. Ghazal Kafi said that what should the, uh, the, the people who are working full time in the industry should do if they want to pursue the PhD program, and we would always route them to one of the MS programs or the MBA program or a relevant program at LUMP. But now, as you mentioned, they do have the opportunity to continue their PhD while they can still work uh, uh, during, during the daytime, however they can manage the program. Um, Dr. Ghazal Badki, again, uh, extension of what Dr. Azim said, get rigor, hair, quality of work, hair, training. But then I also got this idea that our PhD graduates, our PhD scholars are working across the globe. They're, 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 they're spread out. And uh, the, the kind of training that they undergo over here helps them a long way uh, throughout. Uh, we'll could say, uh, Dr. Ghazal, I'm gonna come back to you with a couple of more questions. I do have uh, a question uh, that has come to us from the social media and that is, can you please state the entire process of applying uh, for the PhD program as to where one should begin the research proposal, the instructor, the application? 
सो थोड़ा सा मैं गाइड कर देता हूँ इस पे एंड जहाँ पे बात है अबाउट द रिसर्च प्रपोजल में भी डॉक्टर का सर so uh, we have uh, all you really have to do is to create your application first and we have uh, you know uh, we activated the online applications on 5th november 2021 then you will have to fill in the entire application and submit along with the uh, supporting documents to us then you are required to take one of the two exams it could either be gmat or gre and you will have to take that exam by 29th may 2022 and the application will you know close on 7th june 2022 and the deadline to submit your online supporting documents would be 10th june 2022 so please uh, make sure ke is in date se at least is se kafi pehle aapki application jo hai wo hamare paas aa rahi hai it's a bit lengthy application uh, you will also need to spend a lot of time understanding what your true motivations are with regards to pursuing the phd program and uh, then you'll be shortlisted and will be inshallah called in for an interview dr gazal uh, is there anything that you would like to add to the whole uh, uh, you know application process here and also if you could talk about the research proposal submission yeah uh, i can but i uh, want us to bring anika into the conversation as soon as possible because here is someone who's actively in the program mm-hmm. and i think a lot of uh, questions we are going to be directed to her so let's come back to the research proposal in a bit sure uh, anika uh, before uh, before this question i i wanted to learn about your own academic background first of all and then uske baad why did you decide to join lums and then how does a normal lums day look like uh, in the life of a uh, phd student so kitna rigorous hai program for for person who is continuing the program dr gazal or dr azim ne to bata di kafi zyada jo hai instructors make sure karte hain ki aap throughout the day busy rahe but how has your experience been so far okay aur khas aur se kisi point pe koi regret to nahi hua tha ki kyun join kar liya okay ठीक है अस्सलाम वालेकुम थैंक यू सो मच फॉर हैविंग मी एंड फॉर द क्वेश्चंस आई विल बिगिन विद यू नो माय बैकग्राउंड आई एम बेसिकली एन एमबीए विद अ कॉर्पोरेट एक्सपीरियंस ऑफ अबाउट यू नो ओवर 5 इयर्स आई वाज इन क्रॉस फंक्शनल रोल्स इन लोकल एज़ वेल एज़ मल्टीनेशनल ऑर्गेनाइजेशंस एंड यू नो देयर वाज लॉट्स ऑफ वर्क इट वाज वेरी थ्रिलिंग uh but then i got to a stage where you know i wanted to move into academia and uh you know uh, moving into academia uh without a phd obviously there are lots of barriers uh you know so then looking around lums was obviously the best option it has a leg- legacy you know of academic excellence and it's in pakistan and you know um, so it was the obvious choice and i was really you know happy and grateful you know, that i was able to get in you know despite having a corporate background uh so yeah that was uh, one thing isi point pe aapko ye feel hua ki corporate background hona jo hai wo mujhe zara disadvantage pe rakh raha hai ya mera background jo hai wo academia ka nahi hai main teaching ka background nahi to it is kind of matlab is it is a disadvantage for me while i'm pursuing the phd program uh not really no it wasn't a disadvantage i felt it was more of an advantage because then whenever you know people were talking around me or i was reading articles or you know talking to even cross discipline like to people from um, or you know operations or finance i could relate back to all those concepts and you know so the the reality used to come back to me and i could play it in my mind oh yes this used to happen and this could have happened this way you know so i i think i could relate back to it so absolutely not it did not hamper yes it was uh, shuru mein it was a bit challenging because this is you know academia is a completely different world but then i was expecting that i was up for the challenge and then uh, the faculty you know they sort of oriented me shuru mein anika this is going to be a different world you know this is not somewhere where you're going to come in the morning at night come come you know in the morning at 9 o'clock get tea on your uh, desk it's not going to be like that you know you're going to uh, be slaving so i think wo faculty ka bada haath tha ki unhone mujhe pehle se you're probably going to need tea in the in the nights uh, sorry to keep you i mean i'm saying you're probably going to need more tea in the nights to keep you up while absolutely. you're researching absolutely absolutely 
So, you know, then that's where, uh, but, you know, now it's, um, you know, obviously there was a lot of rigor, staying up nights, you know, uh, squeezing time to, uh, you know, sleep, uh, you know, uh, get some physical exercise, some table tennis or something. Uh, but uh, other than that, uh, you know, do do ghante, you know, two hours to read an article, you know, get what's it all, what it's all about. And that was because I was tra transitioning. But now, obviously, you know, I, I've become so used to it that, you know, five, 10 minutes is all it takes. And, you know, I know what the article is talking so about. It's about training. It's about training. And I think Lums ka bada haat hai. कि यू नो जो हमें शुरू में डेढ़ साल जो कर्स वर्क में इतने प्रेजेंटेशंस कराए काम कराया आर्टिकल्स यू नो सो आई वाज एबल टू गेट दैट काइंड ऑफ बिल्ड दैट काइंड ऑफ स्किल यू नो व्हिच आई कैन यू नो नाउ यूज एंड अप्लाई यू नो वेयर आई एम डूइंग माय एक्चुअल रिसर्च एंड पुट टुगेदर पुटिंग टुगेदर माय थीसिस सो एंड आई थिंक आप इतना ज्यादा एफर्ट कर नहीं सकते इफ यू आर नॉट एक्चुअली very very passionate about what you want to do because uh, i i was in a conversation with with a faculty member at sdsp the other day and he was telling me the same thing ke in our interviews we look for the candidate who is passionate about that particular domain for which you know we have the program agar aap mein right qualifications bhi hain but if you do not have a right idea of where you want to be and how the degree can help you and how the lums life can help you get there so uh, probably joining this program might not be the right right thing to do for you uh thank you so much uh, anika for 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 um, letting us know about uh, your own academic background and it, and again it came as a surprise to me that you did your mba and then you uh, had five years of work experience in industry and in a, in cross functional roles as well and then you joined industry and matlab i think it is something that people who are currently working in the industry could also think about if they want to pursue the phd management program at lums that with their own corporate background they could still pursue an academic program at lums and it's very very possible as dr gazal just explained uh dr azim i'm going to come to you uh in your own understanding how has this program allowed us to cater to the diverse needs of the industry what are some of the gaps that we you know uh, you think that we have been able to fill in with this program and aapka take is mostly be important because you're not in the academia you are working for the uh, for the corporate sector uh, and the development sector so kindly is bare mein thoda sa mai sir random mic kare so i think uh, the way the program is designed uh, you also get an opportunity to work or study with some of the mbas uh, uh, students and you know the areas which are very applied uh and we also you know uh, learn about the case studies which are coming from the industry the case method approach is also used in lums primarily um in in different uh, levels undergrad and grad levels so uh, and we also got the chance to write case studies ourselves so the uh, cases that can be taught at the academic level so uh, that was our very first training in in phd program that we got a mentor Uh, from a faculty and they groomed us that you know you have to collect data uh, from some real life uh, challenges problems in the industry and write a case uh, on on that and every uh, student in my phd cohort we went to that rigorous exercise and uh, some of those cases were then published at, at the top uh, channels as well uh, so that uh, you know provided us an opportunity and then obviously you know the real life problems we are not uh, you know confined to the academic research Uh, my own research in phd has been on the uh, water governance of uh, the uh, irrigated agriculture sector uh, which is a very applied domain and uh, i you know uh, picked up that topic uh, resolved and tried to work out some of the very pressing issues that the irrigation department of uh, punjab that they were facing uh, at the uh, at the department level Uh, and the mm -hmm. research informed about those issues so uh, you are basically given a whole opportunity you can pick up a very you know uh, teething problem in the let's say supply chain domain uh, of a supply chain industry one of our uh, phd colleagues i remember he studied the supply chain of uh, uh, dairy uh, farm and uh, was uh, very very you know keen and in them to resolve some of those issues 
so uh, i think industry does look uh, back to the academia that they get some uh, opportunity to resolve some of their pressing issues and then after your phd it is entirely up to you that you know if you want to really get back to you know, the corporate sector or the development sector the doors are always open and the academia is always there to help i i, I know a lot of faculty members i i still work with them and uh, mm -hmm. they are continuously working with the industry and trying to uh, resolve right. some of their issues with the research that they conduct either themselves or through their phd students bilkul say uh, dr azim uh, uh dr ghazal uh, there are uh, now there are so many questions coming from social media even mujhe thoda sa zara scroll up and down karna pad raha hai ki main jo question dhoond raha tha wo kahan chala gaya so okay so our uh, one question is uh, uh, the first question is uh, that uh, is phd test being conducted by lams to jo hum main ye isme guide kar deta hu ki there are two exams that you can choose from one is gmat the other is gre uh, both of these exams are not conducted by lams um they are conducted by separate bodies so you will have to register for them uh, for uh, for these programs with with them for these tests with them and then there's a question from sara sara is asking how appreciative is lums phd program of the interdisciplinary approach in terms of a different academic background and the prospective area of phd So, Dr. Right. Dr. so thank you, Sarah. I'd actually make made a note of uh, talking about the fact that we are a very interdisciplinary program, and we're a very interdisciplinary faculty, right? So if you, uh, if, you know, if I can tell you about my background, my PhD is in public policy. Uh, it is not in management. It is not in finance. Um, and if you look at the research that our faculty is doing uh, it's it's you know very very diverse and that is why we you know if you look at our website and the brochure that will be out very soon we emphasize interdisciplinarity um and we like to have a cohort that is diverse so um this year's cohort included a, a civil servant um who spent many years in the you know in uh, as a civil servant uh, he has chosen a very interesting topic of research and that is shrines so the shrines of punjab um that's going to be his dissertation right and that's not something that you would think is relevant to a business school but it is because we can I was apply to ask you humanity school ke to nahi hai kahin that's the that's i mean i think uh, responding to sara that that's the kind of um you know interdisciplinarity that we really encourage and the faculty that teach the in the program that do supervision um you know azeen's research for instance is is uh, not something you know you would think that should come out of a public policy program but it's very relevant to uh to our management program so if you look at most of the world's problems they can very easily be defined as management problems so the management of shrines is actually very central to what we do at the business school right so sara if you are uh, someone that embodies interdisciplinarity then i would really encourage you to look at our program bilkul theek bilkul sahi dr gazal and a core question and that is from kiran can we apply if we have background in social sciences and in education and political science i think uh, through your previous answer you already we have answered the question uh okay so uh, now we'll come back uh, to um, another question that we have uh, got here from another platform but before we go over there again jo interdisciplinarity aspect ki baat kiji dr gazal up uh, i remember again uh, through one of these webcasts i was uh, i think communicating with bader and bader uh, uh, you know identified a, a very um, uh, unique point in in the whole uh system that we have over here that lums ecosystem kind of allows us to you know focus on interdisciplinarity uh we have uh, uh, not just the business school over here we have school of humanities and social sciences the school of science and engineering as well school of education and the school of law and the faculty are actively engaged in uh, with the industry with the corporates with uh, with their own research whether it's academia or whether it's you know uh, the government they are working everywhere and if you're working uh, if you're conducting a research that somehow relates to one of uh, to the faculty members at one of these schools you could also go over there and get their input get get support from them and we have an open door policy at lums so just go over there get an appointment and inshallah you'll find our faculty and our students really really helpful uh, to um, as to how they can help you out 
Uh, another question that we have here is how do we reach out to potential faculty for research opportunities? That has come from Asan. Um, so if you're a PhD student at our program, then uh, this is something that we all advise you to do. Uh, in fact, I, um, you know, since I've been the program director, I tell um, our students before they choose their supervisors, before they choose their topics, to go and meet with as many faculty members as possible. And within and across the schools, as you mentioned, Amar, we uh, have a whole pan, uh, you know, we have faculty uh, supervisor panel, and we actually actively encourage that at least one faculty member should be from outside of their main domain. Um, because for us, this is important. Um, and uh, maybe Anika can talk a little bit about that too, from the student perspective. Yeah. Gee, okay. Uh, so I'm sorry, um, in, interdisciplinarity. Okay. Um, so yes, I think um, um, in my community, I have someone who's from, um, you know, outside the field. And it's interest, interesting because when I go talk to them, um, you know, the, the perspectives are different, you know, they're not talking, they're not thinking in terms of what theory, what constructs, they're thinking in terms of every day, you know, what applies to, uh, you know, the world around us. So in that sense, you know, the perspective I get, <clears throat> rather the questions that I get, you know, they sort of help me uh, build my perspective and, you know, sort of uh, um, try and address, uh, you know, the situation. Well, Anika, Anika, there's a question that we ask our current students to ask them. And that is, again, so that the students or that the applicants who are considering to apply to LUMS, you know, get some benefit um, as well. Ke, uh, so, 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 you have done GMAT GI and then you would have been calling for an interview as well. So how was the whole interview situation like? Because I am under the impression that interview probably is the most significant element in the whole admission criteria. Uh, or how interview you have a What was the pressure like? And also, how did you prepare for your GMAT or your GRE, whichever one you prepared for? And how long did it take uh, for you to, you know, actually uh, completely be prepared for the exam? Okay, uh, for my GRE, I uh, prepared like um, during my work and, you know, while I was working. So, you know, like ek mahine mujhe preparation time mila tha. Or usme mene, uh, you know, I sort of prepared for it and gave my GRE. I didn't give my GM, GMAT. And uh, then the interview part, uh, I don't remember preparing much for it. I, like I did know why I wanted to do it, what my proposal was about, where I was coming from and where I wanted to go. That was, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, so, but other than that, I don't really pre remember preparing much for it. I do remember that I was very excited because, uh, you know, the five LUMS faculty, you know, uh, international researchers, associated you know with one of with the best university in Pakistan so I do remember being very excited uh, you know about the prospect of meeting them and I don't really remember much uh, you know being pressurized a lot you know even though some of the questions that were asked uh, were kind of you know scary and I was like okay you know how you know retrospectively I was like okay how how was that applicable you know but obviously I couldn't uh, ascertain at that time why it was applicable. I'm sure the panelists, the, you know, it was up to them, you know, to draw out whatever conclusion they wanted to draw out. And um, I'm just thinking to myself that you must have nerves of, you know, steel. You came with them. I know almost all the LUMS faculty members. I meet with them, but even when, whenever I consider that I'm going to sit and uh, I mean, if I were to apply for a program and if I were to go through the interview situation, I'd still be very, very scared. I know that. So, so up. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, it was, you know, a few years ago, so maybe, you know, I just remember the good part and, you know, there are always multiple emotions. Maybe I remember the positive emotion and I, 
you know i don't remember much of the and also you got in so 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 so, so yes you'll say that bilkul say uh another another question that we have got on social media is that is there a pattern of research proposal to be submitted initially before admission and can you share what it should include uh, dr russell how do we answer this yeah so uh, yes in fact uh, before covid um i gave uh, a very extensive research a research proposal workshop us zamane mein we exactly. used to do in person gmatch gre uh, workshops and then uh, next you know so and mine would be right next to it but i think ab humne wo discontinue kar diye but it should uh, be on fake no bilkul dr gazal asal mein uh, discontinue ni uh, inshallah taala uh, towards the end of next month uh, we will be conducting our graduate testing workshop and then we'll also include that portion where you okay. will be conducting the research uh, proposal so, okay that that's good to know but that's still a whole month away so in the meantime exactly. uh, maybe we can ask uh, ali and shafkat if what they can do is to find that workshop um, because i know it's on facebook and maybe um, share it uh, in facebook taki wo dobara salient ho jaye because that was very uh, yeah helpful bilkul for... bilkul we can have our social media team do that yes let's do that because in that i i uh, very clearly uh, tried to explain exactly what a good or winning research proposal looks like but basically what we want to see is that have you uh, thought about um what you would be interested in doing and and of course we don't hold you to it you can uh, keep changing your mind yeah any other questions we have got another question that is from rida and again the question is about the interview how can we prepare for the interview so so i've already asked anika about it and i'm and now i'm going to go to azim sahab azim sahab please you know tell us how to crack this code interview ko kaise karna hai kyun itna mushkil hai i think what they are trying to judge is not your formal qualification uh, in the area of your research but the passion you bring in but uh, you know the the desire why you are planning to join this program it is something that without passion without your uh, you know your creativity your thinking uh you cannot really pursue so that are the these are the main elements on which they would like to judge you and uh, if you have some sort of uh, clarity why you are joining this program uh why you are motivated uh, to do a particular area of research and uh, as dr hazil just mentioned i mean it's not that you cannot change your area of research there are many instances where the candidates who submitted a proposal let's say to pursue their research in the field of operations they later on thought that their uh, <clears throat> uh, their you know uh, training during the lams have geared them towards let's say organization behavior or strategy Uh, so these are the options that are available the, but the core thing behind is that uh, uh, you should be motivated you should be able to put up effort uh, to pursue your research goals and uh, uh, that is something the faculty really tests you uh, some acumen to carry out research i mean something that you should keep in mind uh, you should be familiar with uh, let's suppose uh, reading uh, you have a reading habit or not that's something that they would also like to explore uh so uh, nothing to worry about uh, the interview to be honest uh, just be yourself uh, just be as uh, mm -hmm. uh, positive and uh, you know uh, focused as possible and uh, then you have a good chance will go say so be yourself or matlab we should be able to see that you uh, your research acumen your habits if you are matlab uh, continuously uh, interested in reading and learning about the world around you or maybe around the topic that you are interested in researching and also your passion to continue the research program at lams uh, dr gazal uh, last question if uh, and not a question just a request that you, if you could kindly and uh, talk about the admission criteria we have put in place for the bsd applicants yes i was just going to say that interview is important but to get to the interview you have to be shortlisted and so <laughs> that's not yet that that's the first step right um so we are uh, you know the uh, the criteria is clearly written on the website the admissions website but i'll emphasize a few things so apart from a minimum uh, gpa or you know if you did fsc then the percentage 
um, and then the research proposal, your GMAT GRE, we have removed any, um, uh, you know, cut off for the GMAT GRE, but that I think has given the, a wrong signal to would-be applicants. What's happened mm -hmm. is that uh, applicants have started to believe that we have to GMAT GRE to uh, entertain karne ko ab hai. But you, know, you have to understand that we have a huge number of applications and the applications are pretty, you know, um, they're quite... Um, hefty for us to read. So the, uh, um, we do apply some cutoff criteria and the GMAT GRE is one of them. So we don't, I, we can't give you a number because it depends on the applicant pool for every year. But if you have a very low um, score, I would urge you to try and improve it to increase your chances of getting shortlisted. Right, uh, so don't take the, the standardized test non-seriously. It is a very important criteria of, for getting shortlisted. Once you're shortlisted and you come to the interview stage, then it's what you say, you know, your body language, uh, the conversation we have. And um, I can assure you, Amar, the faculty that interviews is not very scary. Our idea is not to scare. We are really just trying to find out who the person is. So, so if, if, if whoever, uh, you know, those of you that are listening, please don't worry. Um, uh, we are really exactly what Anika and Azim are saying. We're just trying to see how sure you are of this. Uh, I remember sometimes we had some very good candidates, but they seemed very unsure. It was as if they were, you know, thinking PhD bhi ho sakta hai, corporate job bhi ho sakta hai. So if things like that, because, and the reason is not um, just for us. The reason is also because the PhD is a very long, arduous, painful journey. So if you're mm -hmm. not wholly committed to it, um, then maybe it's not time to apply. Yeah. Thank you so much, Dr. Kassel. And I think I'm very sorry about to get to the interview stage, you first have to clear all the other, you know, uh, stages that come before that. And you also need to take your uh, standardized, standardized exam very, very seriously. So you'll have to prepare for it. You'll need to make sure that you are, that you have enough time to prepare for it. Please do go through the resources. And in my own experience, I have seen that there, there, there is lots and lots available online, which you can, uh, which you can benefit from. There are multiple books as well to ace these GMAT and GRD exams. And um, and yes, be also very, very sure as to what you want to do and how LAMS can help you get there. Uh, so before we sign off, I'd like to once again uh, let you know the important dates that you must keep in mind. Again, the applications, as I mentioned, were, were activated 5th November 2021. And the deadline to take your GMAT or GRE, by the way, again, you'll have to take only one out of these two exams. Uh, it's 29th May 2022. The last day to submit your online application would be June 7th, and the last day to submit your supporting documents would, would be June 10th. And you do not have to send us anything uh, by mail. You do not have to send. Uh, you do not have to hand deliver anything, any document. You just have to, you know, uh, sub, uh, upload all these supporting documents uh, onto the application portal, and we'll get your documents from there. Uh, that's pretty much it. Thank you so much for uh, joining us. Thank you so much, Dr. Ghazal, Dr. Azim, and Anika for taking time out of your schedules, being with us, and guiding the uh, uh, applicants um, uh, into the LUMS PhD management program. Um, we, as I've mentioned this week, have already talked about the MBA program, the MS Financial Management program. Today, we have covered the PhD management degree, and tomorrow, inshallah, we'll talk about the executive MBA program. And for the program, and for the other MS degrees, uh, that are offered at SDSB. We have already conducted webcasts which are available on our Facebook page and they'll soon be available on our YouTube uh, page as well. So if you're interested in any of those programs, please do go and browse our uh, Facebook and YouTube pages and you'll find uh, the relevant videos for, for them. Thank you so much once again. Take good care of yourselves. Allah Hafiz.